Good morning, audience. I just heard a few people here have a 3D printer. Wow. My name is Siert, and I am one of the co-founders of Ultimaker. It's uh, being positioned right there, <laughs> and it's printing. A lot of people think 3D printing is still complex and giant machines. Well, it isn't, because here is one. Um, our ambition is to make 3D printing as normal as using a phone within, say, five years. And I'm not going to talk about our machine, but I'm going to talk about the impact of these machines. Let me talk a little bit about my history. About five years ago, I started here to work in Utrecht at Protospace, the Fab Lab. And it was an amazing place, and I had all these machines at hand, and one of them was a 3D printer. And it really tickled my mind. A 3D printer, that means that if I make a drawing on a computer, I can make that myself and I can use it. I can do it right here, right now. Wow. I don't have the complex production chain that I had in the past. But there was one drawback. That machine that we had out there was 40,000 euros. I couldn't afford one. And I think most of you can't afford one. Um, so that was a bit of a pity. But then I stumbled onto this project. It's called the Wrap Wrap. It was an open source 3D printer. And the beauty of it was that it was designed by a, a professor in England, Adrian Boyer. And he put all the files online. Every single bit that you needed was out there on the internet. All the parts, the electronic designs, the software, the firmware, everything you needed, it was just out there. And I could make my own 3D printer. And the price of the parts was only 500 euros. Wow. I want one. I need one. I am going to make one. And when I started to build one, it was a great voyage. It was awesome. Because while tinkering, I was thinking of the concepts. What if this machine makes something that I need? Then I don't have to buy at the store anymore what other people designed for me. I can create my own stuff. I can make. I am in control. It's freedom to me. I can uh, shape my own environment. Now, this machine was awesome. We had eight machines built in a group, because if you do it in a group, it works better. And the first thing we printed was a shot glass, a little tiny shot glass, and we celebrated that we had our 3D printer. <laughs> but it only worked for two out of the eight machines. But hey, we did it, we did it, we were proud. So what we did was, we threw two of the machines in the trunk of my car, and we decided we need to share this. We need to show people that we done it. And what we did was we drove to Denmark, to Copenhagen, to the Reboot Conference. And it was a beautiful conference. About 600 people were out there. And a lot of them were speakers at conferences. So it was a really great audience. And of those 600 people, almost everyone was like, wow, amazing. But what can I do with it? And we were like, uh, don't they see it? Or am I going nuts here? And then something amazing happened. This seven-year-old girl showed up, blonde hair, nice red thing in her hair, and she walked up to us, and she had a USB stick in her hand. And she said, I have made a drawing of a ladybird. Could you print that for me? And we said, well, uh, if you give us a file, we can, uh, we can print it for you, sure. So we got the file, put it in the machine, and the machine set that work. And the girl was really standing like that, and watching the machine. Fifty minutes later, she was still standing there, and she looked up and she said, it's taking so long. When will it be finished? And we said, uh, well, it's halfway already, so if you show up in another 15 minutes, it will be ready. And so she did. She walked away, 15 minutes later, she comes back. And we gave her her ladybird. And she was smiling from ear to ear. She was really happy with it. And she asked us another question could you make another one for my friend? And we said, no problem, we just pushed the button again, and the machine started to print another ladybird. And then she walked away with her mother, and I hear her tell her mother, mommy, mommy, I want a machine like that. <laughs> Here I was, 600 adults, they didn't got it. They were asking what they could do with it. And this seven-year-old shows up and does, does something with it. Wow. I picked up from her, at this conference, three things. First, 
Oh, sorry, a ladybird. Three things. One thing is, it's normal. 3D printing will be normal. People are talking, it will be a bubble. No, it won't. It will be normal. Second one, it needs to be faster, way faster than half an hour. I mean, I never ever had something quickly in my hand like that girl had, but for her, it was too long. So we need to speed it up. Third thing is, most important one is, she wanted to share. Let me get to the first thing. Why is it normal? If we look at nature, nature is growing where it is, right? If you look at a tree, the tree is not produced somewhere else. No, the tree is growing where it is, where the seed drops to the ground. There the, grease, uh, the tree grows. And the tree grows by using the materials that are in its local tiny environment. And that is intriguing because this machine does exactly the same. It is producing right here, right now, with materials around it. So basically what we've done with this machine is that we mimic nature. And it's just beautiful. The second thing that is very intriguing about nature is that it has these blueprints. The blueprint of a tree is inside a tree, and it's written down somewhere. It's written down in DNA. The four amino acids define how the tree grows. The algorithms are in there. And we are now in an age, the digital age, and we are doing things similarly. We are using zeros and ones to do similar stuff. So the blueprint of the tree is defined in DNA. The blueprint of the ladybird is in zeros and ones on a USB stick. But the process is similar. If we put those zeros and ones on the internet, we can just ship this product over the internet to the other side of the globe without transportation at all. Hey, this is intriguing. This is really intriguing. So I printed this globe. I didn't draw the, 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 the files for it. It was made by a guy somewhere in America. Wow, really cool. And I could just make it with my machine right here, right now. The second thing that girl has taught me is speed. She wants to have it faster. We, as adults, we are stuck in some kind of a linear mode. Everything around us goes exponential, faster and faster. But we don't see it. Why don't we see it? Because we're in the middle of it. But if you look back at history, everything goes exponential. And the speed in which this girl picks it up is just instantly. She sees it, she accepts it, it's normal, and she goes further with it. She's already imagining what she can do with it. That is speed. And we need speed. Because if you look in the future, there are some serious issues that we have to tackle. I only named two. It's the energy problem. We need to solve the energy problem. And the food problem. We also need to solve that and rapidly because these problems are heading towards us in an ever-increasing uh, speed. Third thing, the girl, and the most important thing she taught me is to share. I know it's hard to share, but we teach our children to share. And the strange thing is, we teach our children to share, but do we do it ourselves? Are we sharing our stuff? Are we sharing our car? Well, it's not, we're not used to it. The interesting fact is that we are stuck in a system that is not designed to share. And why is it not designed to share? It's designed to have, to possess, and what we have to protect that somebody else is not taking it away from us. And now there is this new technology at our hand. This new technology can redefine these concepts in having. Because if you have something, I can give it away. I have the blueprint, I can make another one. And these blueprints are really intriguing because if you just look at nature, the blueprint of the tree is inside the tree. Every single cell of the tree has this blueprint. And we are now going to do similar things. We are setting that file online. We are going to share the blueprint so we can all make this product. Let me wrap this together, what I was told by this seven-year-old girl. If we want to give this girl a bright future, we have to behave differently, seriously. We have to stop the fear of possession. We have to leave that, that, that not sharing thing we have to shift. We have to shift to trust and trust each other. And 
If you want to make our future bright, 3D printing could be the key element in that. But the big catalyst to make that happen is what we need to do. Behave different, start sharing. Sharing is the key. People start sharing. And here is the gift of my seven-year-old hero to you, her ladybird. Thank you. Siert, thank you very much for being the first one today. Thank you. I actually, I really like your story. I still have one question for you. How much is it? <laughs> it's not 40,000 euros. It, this one we sell for about 2,000 euros. It's a little bit more, including tax. And can I then also ask the printer to m print me a second one so that I have two for that price? We were working on that. <laughs> That's really great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's not easy to be the first one on a TED day, so give him one more big hand. See it, Vinya. Thank you. Thank you.